Welcome to this video and in this video I'm going to explain you my top 3 tips getting better in dovetailing because you definitely want to know what that is. Alright, before we're going to step in those 3 tips I'm going to explain a little bit why I made this video and what is special about dovetailing or hand cut joinery. To get better in woodworking I experienced that if you are working with hand tools and this kind of precision that helps you in bigger projects so it stimulates the feeling of what you can do and where you need to look at at least that is my experience the other hand is it's a traditional joinery that is really really satisfying to do so if you nail this process it's uh, another bonus thing that you can implement in your furniture or small furniture that will stand out in the end when you have it in your home in your living room you're like I'm proud of that. So I got that especially with dovetails. Now let's jump in those three tips. Tip number one, start with your tills. Those are the tills. And then you're going to your paint board. So we're going to put this to the side. So to cut your tills, there are multiple ways to do that. I like to cut them one by one because I noticed that can be quite hard to stay straight. So to get started, you have to cut the tills. I like to lay out my tills quite perfect so I, they are highly visible but I like to use a jig as well smaller boards I will do the ha free handed bigger boards in my latest project I use a jig and that is straight away tip number one if you get started or you're a professional and you want to get faster the process of dovetailing can be time consuming I like to implement tools that hand tooling is still required so you still have to do it by hand but it gives you a little bit more speed in your process so i'm using these jigs that has a magnet in there and a clamping device like so this is a 90 degree angle um, so you can cut 90 degrees and i'm using this one to cut the end pieces of my tailboard so this year so i like to cut first all the angles and then i'm gonna bring this in to cut that bit over there and that helps really, really well with staying exact 90 all over this line. This is the magnet till jig. So it has a 1.6 degree angle steep. Now you lay out your tills and you cut them. I like to use a Japanese saw because that gives a really clean cut. That way you don't have to clean the inner side. So in between here with a chisel so it's just one cut I never clean that and it's it's very very clean depends on your saw blade and your saw, your blade teeth obviously but as I said I like to use the Zoki Japanese saw I will put a link in the description below which I am using what I also like to do sometimes is lay out my tails and that is just aesthetic because this is actually what um, helps you to cut your tills with a magnet. So it depends on where you put this line, that's actually where your cut will come. This, if you are really good, you can use this for laying out your tails, cut them freehanded also very well. But speeding up the process, and if you're not um, really, really into dovetailing yet, this helps you to get accurate dovetails from the beginning so I highly recommend looking into a jig this one the cat's Moses one it also has a magnet there are tons out there but why I like this one is you can clamp it and now you can you have a one hand free to hold your board or whatever so you don't have to hold the jig all the time which is another thing that can go wrong in the process but that's my experience so let's go into tip number three, and that is blue tape. Some people use it, some people don't. Um, there's actually one way how I really like to use blue tape. You just take the first piece, and you don't have to be that accurate. Just put it on there. Then you bring in your depth gouge with the measurement of your pin side board, so the thickness of this board set it lock it in place and then just cut the blue tape just enough so you don't go too deep 
and that avoids that cutting line from my depth gouge. Then you can take off the blue tape. So if you got the blue tape added like this, you pull away the waste material, you have a nice straight reference for cutting your uh, tails. Basically the same as a reference line with your depth gouge. This is a little bit cleaner because if you don't go too hard, it stays clean and you remove the tape and it's good. Now there's another bonus here as well. This line here automatically will be a reference for your pin board. You're gonna bring in your pin board. You don't have to squeeze this too much. You're gonna bring in a nice straight reference on your workbench. It even can be a sustainer. I use a sustainer when my boards are really big. So then I'm gonna bring in my tail board lay it on there like that bring it a little bit down bring this one in and then i have a really nice straight reference that you can push against the pin board and then you can take over the lines with a knife so there are two ways to take over the tails on your pin board now you're gonna do it like so so remove all the middle waste and then bring it in so keep your tape on there and then bring it in take over all the lines or you just cut only your tails, don't remove the material in between here, bring it in and then take over your line. That helps you to keep your blade more straight. I like to do this this way. So I'm gonna cut all the tails, bring it in. So I keep my blue tape on there, bring it in. And then I like to take over my tails. Now there is one thing that I really want to show you that I've been using lately. I didn't show that much in videos because I wasn't sure if it was good enough. But I have to say, I'm impressed what you can do with these files. It's just a simple, simple tool, but to clean all the small corners, especially with a pin board, you can dial in really, really fine your angle. So you can remove just enough to get a really nice snug fit now sometimes especially with oak if you're gonna if it's not fitting well so if you're gonna bring in your board and you just need to take off uh, one mil or e not even that half a mil of your pin and you're gonna bring in the chisel it can break so it can break inwards that is my experience in order to take that off i'm just gonna take one of these especially one of this one so this has nice sharp corners now those corners will allow you to get really really nice in these in the small edges of the inside that is my process and it gives me really clean fitting uh, dovetails in a short time so so I have multiple of these things and what I want to show you here to get in this small corner over there you got this sharp edge here and you can bring it in and you can keep it as straight as possible and then you can clean that edge over there and that is really really perfect also to clean your pins and as I said if your pin is too big again I rather have them too big than too small you can just tweak until you got the perfect fit and that is something I never saw before I started using this a while ago and I'm quite impressed what you can do with this. So you can do the same thing with your tails, especially if your tails are smaller, you have smaller of these. I even got a flat one which has really sharp edges as well. And then you just can bring it in, clean the corners and work up to a perfect fit in your dovetails. So this is my first video of giving tips and advice, just three simple tips that help you to improve your dovetails, maybe, hopefully, if you find it useful, support my channel, please hit the like button, subscribe button, and um, yeah, up to you guys, if you want to see more, let me know in the comments what you want to see, uh, and I will definitely make a video about that as well. So many thanks for watching, and see you in my next video.